around by myself and I had so much time to sit and think about myself and then there she was like double cherry pie yeah there she was like disco superfly I smell sex and candy yeah who's that lounging in my chair Who's that casting devious stares in my direction? Mom, this surely is a dream. Thank you, Karim. Uh, my <laughs> welcome to my kitchen, Henri. Welcome to my kitchen, Karim. And uh, welcome, guys, to my kitchen as well from the comfort of your uh, houses during this confinement period. We decided to prepare this entire uh, session for you, for food lovers, for wine lovers, and for music lovers. So it's always three in one, and it's always the best combination, uh, I believe. Um, I just want to share with you a couple of things that occurred to me during this confinement and this is how I got to uh, get to know better these two uh, gentlemen standing uh, next to me. So uh, my only way to travel through this confinement was through cooking, sharing my recipes with you and through music and through wine, discovering new bottles and I would be ordering each and every time from Enotica up till we finally met and decided to collaborate together on the food and wine uh, pairing. Definitely, actually it was a um, great discovery uh, because uh, we've been following uh, Nicole for a while and we're discovering her recipes and uh, we discovered that uh, a good plate needs a good wine and uh, so that's why we're here today. We pair to match the wines with the cooking that she's doing because a good meal is always with a glass of wine. Exactly, and unlike what people usually tend to believe or think that they're going to be paying a lot to actually get wines and prepare foods at home, we prepared today affordable recipes. Uh, we know very well we're going through very difficult times in Lebanon. Hyperinflation is hitting us very hard. So all these recipes are pocket friendly and they're delicious and healthy at the same time. And during this confinement as well, if you've been following me on Instagram, you know that I jog almost every day in Muntaza and Karim happens to be my neighbor that I never got to know that much. And now we uh, got to know each other. Exactly. I realize this is all from your, from your garden? Yes. Yeah. From, so from my garden, exactly. Yeah. So uh, we would like you to ask us all the questions you have, interact with us, we will be uh, throwing uh, three questions or three competitions for you to win uh, bottles of wines from Enotica. And uh, we're going to begin with our first recipe yeah. that I don't know if you guessed what is it. Um, I guess it's a pesto. Probably. Exactly. And since uh, you're mentioning that all those are coming from your garden, uh, and I understood that you're doing bio gardening, so I have got you a bio wine to match with your recipe, okay. to be on the healthy side as well. Nice. Okay. So, so what's the difference usually between a bio wine and a regular uh, Hello. Wine? The difference between a bio wine and a regular wine is basically mm. the grapes. The grapes are planted in a bio way, that means there are no use of chemical, that you don't have any outside components that have been there, and your wine is 100% naturally grown. Okay. Well, so when we say the wine is bio, it's mainly the grapes that's bio, and the process of winemaking remains the same, which is a natural process. Okay. Bio, organic. Organic, yeah. No, we call it organic, bio, natural wines. So all those are the same connotation. Okay. And, and it usually it is certified by um, the community in European that it is bio. Okay. And is it related to less headaches? Uh, headaches is related to sulfur in wine, okay. not to the fact that it's bio or non-bio. Even bio wine has a small percentage of uh, sulfur. You know that sulfur is a natural component to preserve the wines, so there is always a certain percentage of sulfur in the wine. But sometimes it's added in bigger Sometimes it's amounts. a little bit added, uh, but usually, and you should know as well, that the sulfur is present naturally from the grapes. Okay. So you have the natural sulfur, which is inside the bottle, and a small percentage is added to preserve the wine. And usually, if it's well controlled, there is very little sulfur in it. Okay. Do I buy wines? Sorry, have less uh, sulfur. Technically, you cannot know. You have to be behind, you have to be in the winery to know exactly what's the amount of sulfur used. Uh, but usually when people have headache from a wine, it's mainly because it has probably a higher percentage 
of sulfur than other What ones. is the percentage we should it's, be looking uh, at? I don't know, we're talking in grams. I'm, you know, I'm a wine lover and a wine okay. enthusiast, and, but I'm not a technician, so I would give you wrong numbers. I wouldn't know what's the exact amount, but usually... Uh, but this is minimum. something to, 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 be, to be looking uh, at when we're purchasing a bottle of wine to check the levels of uh, sulfur mm, because they are it. often like behind the headache that many people, they actually uh, say we just had a glass. There's, and <laughs> there's no way of checking it because you never know what's the percentage okay. of sulfur in that really unless you do. Uh, not necessarily, it depends on the wineries. Uh, usually warm countries use a little bit more sulfur. Uh, because the fact that we are come from a co warm country gives you the fact that wines oxidize faster, so you have a little bit on, on um, you have they sometimes they could use a little bit more. But you have new wine techniques that is being more and more used where it allows you to reduce the amount of sulfur that is used in the wines. So okay. for uh, Christina and many other that are asking what am I preparing here? Okay. I'll be pairing with the organic wine based on our organic uh, umbrella of ingredients that we have here. I'll be preparing a low budget uh, pesto. We know very well that pesto originally uses or requires the use of Italian cheeses such as pecorino or parmigiano. And nowadays they became very expensive. So I replaced that with acawito, which is akewe cheese. It's a locally produced uh, white cheese that actually tastes very well when blended with rocca, when blended with, uh, sorry, wild thyme that I also got from the garden and from mint leaves that I also got from the garden with a bit of almonds because I decided to substitute pine nuts that are very expensive nowadays with almonds that are very rich in calcium and proteins, very uh, delicious at the same time, with olive oil and uh, the recipe calls for garlic. I don't know if... I'm personally not a big fan of garlic. I'm not a big I fan know, of garlic as well. I know that <laughs> pesto <laughs> usually is yeah. garlic based. I know that Lebanese love garlic, but... Uh, I would so, like to try it if we can without garlic for a change. Okay, we'll do that. So I'm going to start. Actually, pesto means to use the mortar and to... This is what pesto means. So pesto is not specifically basil leaves like pesto sauce. It's not uh, the so. Uh, it's not only to use uh, basil leaves. You could be using any green leaves we have, and uh, just use the mortar to prepare them. Now to avoid a lot of uh, uh, sound uh, pollution during the session, I'll be using the food processor. It's going to be faster, quicker. I'll just annoy you for a couple of seconds, and then uh, we'll get to listen to. Music. <laughs> but I didn't know that pesto meant any type of green leaves. I thought pesto was exclusively basil. It's any type of, of leaves. Yeah, yeah. Anything you could use. Because when we say pesto, for me, to, is the basil. To crush using and the mortar. Basil. I didn't know that. That's I good to know. Pine, pesto. Is this your recipe? Yeah, it's my, yes. it's, oh, it's my recipe. Your creation. <laughs> Okay, so meanwhile, um, okay. we're gonna try, I know that uh, you like to have a good wine and uh, since we're doing this first wine, this first wine is a wine that's designed to go as well with dish or eventually an aperitif. So we're gonna have a little bit of wine while you're preparing your... Um, with uh, pleasure. <laughs> and before that, I'm gonna ask you, how do you open a screw cap bottle of wine? Well, usually, this is how I would open it. Okay, so this is a misconception for everybody. To open a bottle of wine, a screw cap, you never take it from the top. Because when you take it from the top, it's more difficult to open. So you grab it from below and you do a small turn and ta -da, it's open with effortless. Uh, so this is the right way to open a screw cap bottle of wine. That's something okay. I don't know. Voilà. Yeah. So it's something that nobody knows and that I discovered one day by pure chance because I saw somebody doing it and I asked him, why are you doing this? Why don't you open it from top? He says, because it's harder to open like this than to turn down the tag and it opens faster and easier. Yeah. So, but you have a bigger uh, surface. To, to kind but of you have a bigger surface and then besides you, you don't apply pressure on the screw cap to opening because you just need to turn it like this and it's on cruise. When okay. you're yes. holding it like this, you're putting pressure on the sides of it and it's harder to turn. Cool. So that's a trick. And 
Regardless, how do you feel about drinking a wine that's closed in exactly. a screwdriver? Exactly. Actually, many people freak out about the idea. They would say that it's not going to be a high quality wine if you don't necessarily have a proper cork and everything. So, okay. yeah. so <clears throat> traditionally, people love corks. They say the cork is all the romanticism and all the touch of opening the bottle, it's added value, whatever. Yes and no. Hello. What, guarantee, what this guarantees you as a consumer that you have absolutely zero chance to have a corked button. So your wine is 100% safe and you cannot have any defect on the cork, any problem of storage before you purchase it. So it's a guarantee and plus it's neutral. So it has absolutely no impact on the wines. And usually we recommend those for wines that meant to be drank younger. So okay. you say value wines, do you won't ever okay. find this on extremely expensive wines because one of the reasons people won't accept it and the second reason is that this is made for wine that's to be consumed rather fast okay so it's totally fine you have other type of closures which is uh, synthetic cords and stuff like this it's the same thing it's even better than to have um, a bad cork okay i will let you do your noise <laughs> I promise this is going to be super fast, but we want you to see how quick and fast this recipe is actually. Meanwhile, we can try. <laughs> yes, sorry, I got distracted by the smell of your, um, of your dish, so that's why I... I can play something really loud. <laughs> so we'll be adding the almonds. could be adding more green leaves and while I'm doing so we could <laughs> actually gonna have a ah, you see I was waiting for you to give us a so what do you feel about this wine what's your impression today we have Karim that is a music lover a cook fan and a wine amateur like everybody is he's been drinking wine for years and we were discussing before the session you said but I drink wine, sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't like it, and I don't know why. So basically, we're going to teach him today, uh, with his permission, the first steps to be able to try to understand the wine world, which is not a big balloon of fantasy where people say, oh, no, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to like my wine, and I don't know one more about this because it's so mysterious that it's mystic and I can't know about it. Actually, everybody can know about wine. It's the simplest thing that you can ever do. So, Karim, First thing of all, when you taste a wine, you have to look at the color. To look at the color, the idea is to have a white surface below it and to look from top to bottom to be able to look at the color. So here we have a rose, a white pale color, which is normal because it's a young wine and it's a Sauvignon Blanc, okay, done in Spain from Marques de Riscal. The second thing we do in, in wine is the nose. So you have two noses in the wine, which people don't know. The first one is, what do you smell when it's still? So you have a little bit of aroma, but it's not very strong. The second thing you do, you do this with your wine. Okay, everybody thinks it's fancy, but if you don't know how to do it, you put the glass down on the table and you just write an O and it gives you the movement that you can do. Okay. So the second smell, once you do this, you aerate the wine, you let the wine liberate a little bit of its aromas and then yeah, I don't know if it's psychological, but it just feels like there's a difference. There is a difference. So now you have a stronger smell. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the hard part of wine is what, is what do you smell? So basically, you recognize a smell. I'm sure you recognize something. Yeah. But I think it's I something think that's on the table. You know? mm, no, it's not something that's on the table. Uh, no? ah, mm, yes, <laughs> I just saw it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what Nicole just did is the natural reflex so what you have you're smelling in the smell you recognize it you say I know it okay and what usually people do is look for a visual which is in this case the pineapple that tells you ah this is what I'm smelling so this is a natural <laughs> reflex for people to do so the big difficulty in wine is to link the smell that you have in the glass with a smell that you already know okay and it could be anything for example here this wine is a bit exotic in terms of aromas and we have 
there are aromas of pineapple in the nose. Oh, so, okay. there, so there is? There is, yeah. yeah, it, yeah. Is, it does smell, uh, I don't know if you can identify, it does smell like pineapple at the first nose. Okay. So, so pineapple is one of the actually notes in wine to the um, nose, right? It's one of the aromas. In wine you have more than 1000 aromas that are identified. So it could go from pineapple to a lychee to a grapefruit to any smell that you usually know. It can go as well to leather, it can go through you have so many things to mushrooms, to pepper, to any smell that you know in your life can be present inside a glass. Okay? The tough part is to identify it. Okay. Sonica, do we have authorization to taste the wine? Yes, sure. I already did. <laughs> 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 but, Sorry, you see, but I like uh, to take uh, my uh, time. Uh, the, smell, okay. the smell is one of the most important part of the wine because it, it, it gives you a story on the wine. Okay, so... So, when you have it in mouth, what do you feel? What's your first impression? <laughs> I feel like I want to have another one. That's a good reaction. If you, if you have a glass and you want more of it, that means that the wine is good. Yeah, if fresh. you have a glass and you don't feel like the second one, you don't want it. So, after your second impression, the first impression, you always feel the acidity in the white wine. Why? Yeah. Because your goosebumps are sleeping. And when you introduce the wine, you actually wake them up, so it gives you this high acidity feeling. Okay? On the second sip, what do you feel? Flower, right? It's very refreshing. Um, the finish is not very long, but it's not very. It's short. normal. That's that's a pleasure wine. That's a exactly. wine that's actually drank. It's a wine that goes very well with the dish you're doing. It's a wine that goes very well in aperitif. So you don't expect it to be extremely long. Okay. What you find in mouth is a little bit of citrus acidity. True. The smell like that gives it this lightness to the wine. I a told little you things on the grapefruit. table. Yeah, I know you're good at tasting. You've proved it. So uh, we have a little bit of agrima. We have as well white flowers. I'm going to let you. I need to taste it. Go ahead. Once you say it, I taste it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is... Cheers, guys, to all those who are uh, cheers to everybody uh, telling us. Cheers, Tony, Carol. I hope you guys had the chance to try this because if you didn't try this wine, it's uh, really um, a good wine to try and very fresh, very, very refreshing for the summer since we're getting the other. Exactly. Really okay, I'm done with that, annoying you. So I previously <coughs> prepared pasta. Uh, I don't know how do you usually boil pasta? Boil, yeah. How? Fried. With water. I mean, uh, do you add like salt? I read Why? the instructions. Ah, okay. <laughs> well, at least you read well, the instructions because. <laughs> I usually yeah. only put water and salt and I cook them. Many no. people tend to actually boil pasta and add to the boiling water before it actually starts boiling salt, oil. And this doesn't really help the pasta to boil properly because when you add oil, oil will not let pasta and the sauce stick to it properly so uh, it will be very uh, slimy and if you add salt before the water starts boiling eventually the salt is going to evaporate so 100 grams of pasta we boil a liter of water and then we add around 7 grams of salt when the water boils and we read very the sure. timing if we want it al dente we only subtract two minutes so i'm gonna I'm going to uh, add my uh, acawito pesto to the pasta I'm heating here. And you're frying the pasta? No, just heating it a bit, although it's not recommended, but we don't have much time now to boil and do all these things. Well, I've done it many times. So. We have a competition, so we really want you to stay tuned to focus on everything we're saying. Uh, try to uh, take some notes about the bottles we are drinking, the names of the bottles. Uh. Okay, so basically, Karim, you had an interesting reaction, which probably, I don't know if people noticed. You said, now that you say it, I find it in my glass. Yeah. Yes, but that's exactly what I was telling you in the beginning, that 
you know you have the senses, you know your taste, you know you, you have them. But the hard part is to say what it is. What it is. Yeah. So when I tell you, you, I smell a little bit of citrus, I smell a bit of flower, white flower, you do find those in the glass. So my answer to you is that you know your wines already, but you have to have to know how to put words on what you're smelling in your glass. And that's what's the difference between just having a wine and understanding the wine that I'm having and why do I like it. So basically, you can identify, let's say, an aroma in this wine that you don't like and say, this is the reason why I don't like this wine. Ah, okay. Okay. So that's well. So you can so have reasons. you get a wine, you can also get it according to what you prefer. Your preference. Exactly. Is going to bother you with a plate? No problem. For it's you pleasure. to try. You know I'm a good eater, so... <laughs> you, know, you know there's a very... Um, music plays a very important role while we're eating. If we're listening to upbeat tunes, we would be eating in a fast way. When, if we are listening to uh, soft, relaxed, soft music, music we will be eating slowly and by eating slowly we will definitely be eating less and we will be digesting food in a much better way. I never thought that I'm would gonna be a do that. <laughs> on, on, so now you're gonna play something smooth so we yeah, can I enjoy the this. this is so. what we're, uh, I'm being requested to do, isn't it? Is this the request? Yeah, please. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna see how fast I'm gonna eat. <laughs> Thank you, if Nico. If you want to grab your fork from uh, from where? Okay. The derriere. So I'm gonna have a bite and I'm gonna pass it down to you. My bed, don't deal with that. Go together well, together well. I love you, I love you, I, I love you. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, take it from the top because I, I started wrong. Okay. Yeah. Hello, Rob. It's very good, very nice experience. <laughs> we want to see how many bites you're consuming. But you guys want to try it. Later because on. Because you're not gonna have any difficulty like this. Together, well, you my share. So. The herbs you put are really nice, they're elegant, and you have this really nice fresh smell, and the Akawa gives it a little bit of tint, which goes perfectly well with your Sauvignon Blanc. From That's great. Love you, I love you, I love so it's a highly recommended recipe to try. Very nice, very refreshing, perfect for the season, I would say, because the two goes very well together. You have a nice light wine, and as well you have a dish that is quite interesting and well refreshing at the same time. So. Bravo, Nico, for your recipe. I really loved it. Karim, would you like to try it? Yes, absolutely. Well, I put your new fork. Okay. <laughs> yeah, with Corona well, and everything. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> we will be uh, using the same pesto that we prepared with Akewe to actually blend in zucchinis that are very low in calories that we boil, that we all have in our households. How is it? Mm. Surprising, you wouldn't say it actually has a kiwi. Mm. Actually, it wasn't bad idea to send me the plate because I'm not going to get any. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is, no, you're not going to eat that. <laughs> no, I'm not it's okay. I know. It's really good. So, um, we will toss in the zucchinis, and meanwhile, Henri, can you just give us the first question for the competition? So, so that the people first can start question for the competition was. Um, what's the particularity of um, the Marquez de Riscal Sauvignon Blanc? Which is? Uh, which this is this one. There is one element that I mentioned in the beginning related to the Garden of Nicole. So if you guys guess, that would be the first question. That would be the first question answered properly, the first winner. Please do submit your questions now, or your answers now. And any question you have, please do submit it as well. So. I know, we'll continue that later. <laughs> yeah, it's really good though. It's very different. Lake was really good. Though. Cheers to everyone that is actually saying uh, cheers and cheers to mm -hmm. happiness, to health and to better days. We're all going through the same uh, difficult times and we just need to be optimistic and to be enjoying the things that we love, eating, drinking in moderation, definitely. <laughs> you may be looking at me, she's a dietitian, she's drinking. Well, I'm a human being after all and we're allowed to be drinking in moderation. And wine, 
when drank within moderation, within a balanced diet plan, could help you lose weight. Yes, this is not uh, a false uh, idea or a false misconception on the contrary. Many studies have shown that when you include wine to two glasses uh, per day within a balanced diet plan, this will help you burn more calories, burn more um, fat. Nicole, how about people, I hear people say, how many calories in the wine, there's too much alcohol, calories in the alcohol, is that so? I don't personally count calories. My followers know that I count memories, not calories. But if you would like to know, well, wine is one of the least caloric drinks you could be enjoying. White wine has the least calories when compared to red wine that has an additional, like it has 10 more calories. So it's not that big of a deal. Rosé, I'm not really a big fan of. Rosé, Rosé is for, is for me, it's same, either white it's or very red. Close. <laughs> it's, either, it's very close to the, exactly. to the white wine in terms of calories. So. so Yep. Exactly. I'll be preparing the second recipe. I'm going to annoy you for the last time, I promise, with the food processor. I'll be blending the boiled zucchinis or kusa that are very low in calories, very rich in vitamins yeah. and minerals, with the rest of the pesto sauce so that we reduce upcycle food waste. And uh, we will be serving this with uh, canned tuna and water. Definitely, it's better to get tuna fresh, but nowadays things are getting more and more difficult for us to get fresh items. So canned tuna and water because it will retain all the omega-3. It will have less calories than canned tuna and oil. To all of you guys who are asking where can you submit your answers, please submit your answers on Instagram. Type your answers and on Facebook as well. We are going live on Instagram and Facebook from Enotica and uh, Eat Like Nicole. What we get here is something that's similar to uh, puree, puree where we usually use potatoes. So here we are going low carbs by using uh, zucchinis that are really low in carbs, very low in calories. And when blended, they smell uh, yeah. so yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's more like uh, pesto now actually. It smelled more like the akeo before. It was very good, but I guess this gives it uh, pesto. That's, that's good. Uh, so bravo to all those who are giving the right answers. Yella, we want more. <laughs> Do you know how many Can I just answers? have the, no, the, the second circuit. one to serve this? The second, second Can we repeat answer. the question some are asking? Hello, asking there is a, between the first wine, the Marquez de Riscal, and the Garden of Nicole, there is a relation. What's the relation between the first wine and the Garden of Nicole? That was the first question. Submit your answers on Instagram, Facebook of Enotica and Eat Like Nicole. And please do ask any question you have. For example, what is the ideal serving temperature of white wine? Uh, that's very interesting. Everybody says that white wine has to go into ice cubes and water and be extremely chilled. Exactly. Well, actually, when you do that, Nicole, you actually chill your wine too much. Okay. okay. As you can see, I've look at the bottle, there is no ice cube, there's nothing. Why? Because your white wine has to be between 10 and 12 degrees. So it's between 10 and 12 degrees. So if Don't you do go that, minus. <laughs> if you go, if you put it on ice cubes with a lot of, with a lot of ice cubes and water. It will actually destroy the quality. It will, no, it will lower the temperature of the wine. Your wine is going to be between 6 okay. and 8 degrees, which is too, uh, too low for a white wine. And when you do that, you kill all the aromas that you have in your glass. Okay. If you smell, if you still have it from the first wine, if you smell your glass now, you will see that the aroma is much stronger than when you first had it in your glass. And why is that, Nicole? Why? Because the temperature, the bottle was... It changes. At, it changes the smell that you have. And when the temp wine temperature goes up a little bit, the smell releases better itself. Okay. Okay, so now we are probably a little bit above 20 degrees, so that's why you have a very strong nose All right. and the wine is there. So temperature of service is extremely important. If it's too cold, you won't taste the wine. If it's too hot, you won't enjoy okay. it. So it's really important. Okay. I'm yes. you yeah, exactly. You're not bothering me, but if you don't tell me what you want, I can give it to I you. I want this. The circle. <laughs> and all these bottles are available on Enotica's website, enotica.com, uh, that I use during the skin. .lb. <laughs> the, wh <laughs> when you use it on a daily basis, you know, like your laptop memorizes it, so you don't have to enter it anymore. That's a good news, Nicole. That means you're a very good customer. Right? 
So. I am, and that's <laughs> why I have a promo code for you, Sip Like Nicole, uh, where you can get 20% uh, off your orders. So uh, it's really beneficial. So, Nicole, you told, you told me during our conversations over uh, social media while doing lockdown that you like to travel. Yes. So, we took, I took you to Spain on the first wine. And now we're going to... And now I'm taking you to Italy wow. for the second wine. So we're going to see that, I'm going to show you that we can travel as well through wine and experience really different style and types of wines without traveling. And this is maybe inspiring for us, for other words, to go okay, discover those nice. wines in their countries of origin when lockdown is over. So for that, I chose a wine that's done by Santa Cristina. Which, which I really is like. I am done by Antinori. Antinori is a, the 20th generation of Antinori family producing wine in, wow. mainly in Tuscany. So it's really a historical family in the wine industry and it's still owned by the family today, which is a particularity of, of, um, of this family. Okay. And we're going to have the Campo Grande from Santa Cristina, which is a very nice one. Very, I see that the very different from the first one that you have. going to be paired with uh, the zucchinis with the akawi pesto with either tuna and water or sardine and water. Sardine is a very small fish but it has a lot of nutrients, a very big uh, nutritional profile. It has a lot of omega-3 coenzyme Q10 that will help you burn fat easier. So with you we're traveling to Italy. What about you Karim? Where are we traveling to? Uh, New Orleans. Okay, let's go. <laughs> There is a house in New Orleans They call the rising sun And it's been the ruin of many a poor boy And God, I know I'm one My mother was a tailor She sold my new blue jeans. My father was a gambling man down in New Orleans. And the only thing a gambler needs is a suitcase and a trunk. And the only time he's Satisfied is when he's all drunk. Woo! This is one of my favorite songs, actually. Yeah, you told me. So, in between New Orleans, so. Italy, and Lebanon. So, Karim, I want you to tell me if you feel a difference between the two wines. Okay. Actually, one of the secrets and one of the reasons why people uh, don't really get to know the wines is basically because when you drink a wine usually you drink one white eventually one red after and you never compare them okay so one of the clues of tasting is comparing the wines that you have all right so we just had the first wine which was very pineapple very round very crisp citrus the second wine is going to be very different so i want to have your impression on the second wine well, already it's less uh, strong. Uh, so right? it's less aromatic in the nose. There is a difference. It has. It's more discreet in the nose. Mm. This is, uh, we have a little bit of white flowers in the smell, but it's very discreet. It's very yeah. hard. Do not have the nose is very discreet. It's not very present. Then the mouth, we have a very different feeling. It's. Definitely extremely different. wide, it's extremely savvy, it doesn't have a lot of acidity, it's a bit chewy, so you really have something totally different and characteristic than the first wine. I don't know if you yes, felt that. Yeah. And we are no longer on the uh, bromas of uh, exotic fruits, pineapple, uh, stuff like this. We are more into white flowers, this is discreet, we don't have the citrus anymore. So it's really a totally different wine, it's a wine that goes more with a meal, that would be harder to serve as a first drink but to match with a meal like Nicole prepared us, okay. it's something that would go very nice with the sardine because it's more powerful in the mouth. I don't know if you felt the difference. 
Yeah, and it's uh, less aromatic in the nose, and I guess it has more of a... It has more body in more the mouth, it has more mouth. presence. Yeah, absolutely. It's true. But, so but when you say it, I wouldn't have been able to put it in those Yeah, but that's, that's the whole secret of... of, of but I do feel... Uh, that's the whole, not the secret, but that's how people get to understand wine, is putting words in what you have in your glass and be able... And do comparison. If you have the first glass, you can smell the two glasses and you will see there's a very clear difference between both of them. And if you tell me which one you prefer, I will tell you which one, which white wines to buy. Right. <laughs> well, I'll tell you who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> no, but I can, by understanding the wines that you like, I can identify the style of wines Definitely. that we can recommend. That's Definitely. part of our job as, as uh, wine uh, sellers to advise you on the style of wine that you would like. And it's mm -hmm. really actually very interesting. Uh, some people, you know, like they just keep on getting the same bottle and they don't uh, dive into exploring different horizons, different bottles. And for me, it's really like traveling. If you end up traveling to the same place every trip, what would you learn? What, what's going to be new on your dish or on, on your plate? It's really very important to explore. And this doesn't mean to all of you who are wondering now, why isn't Nicole talking about local wines? I'm maybe one of the biggest uh, um, fans, uh, of fans of local wines. And you know that very well from my blog, from the places I explore, from the local wines I always support. But you reach a point where you just feel like exploring the world. So you just want to get out yeah. of... Uh, you know, wine, wine is like cooking. Exactly. Uh, we love Lebanese food, but... Do we eat Lebanese food every day? No, we have exactly. Lebanese food one to time. We have something Italian, we have something French, exactly. uh, something Spanish. So f food is like wine. You have to experience all of it. And I'm going to experience, experience your plate this. right <laughs> now. <laughs> and thank you guys to all those who are uh, watching us. Uh, thank you, Marwan, for the comments. and. Uh, and we really want to hear your questions about wine, about the food preps. How do you like it? It's really light in terms of, but very rich in terms of flavors. Light in terms it's of It's very nice. I like and nutritional profile. <clears throat> your sauce is actually giving a no, another dimension of the sardine because I usually eat the sardine with a little bit of butter and a piece of bread and lemon like everybody does. Exactly. And it never came to my mind that you could actually serve the sardine on a dish. And so I thank you for that great experience because it's really matching. And instead of using butter and stuff like this, you know, to, to soften the taste of the sardine, we really have the herbs coming up and giving that extra smell and a little bit crunchy coming from the almonds. It's a very interesting dish. I'm going to pass it over. Thank you, Mia, okay. for your comment. Um, I'm going to bother you with the... <laughs> What? Sorry. No, tell me. We just need the to uh, get started with the third Are recipe done? that's going to um, be based on the tasting use one of... Tasting one bite now, we'll have more afterwards. Eggplants. Okay, let me see if I can do this. Thank you. They uh, usually say in Turkey, if you dream about three eggplants, this implies happiness. Why three? <laughs> that's, that's in Turkey. I, I, I always know. heard happiness comes with two people. Well, how come three eggplants bring happiness? <laughs> well, Turkish, you know, they're, they're special. Pretty, pretty, yeah. pretty strange, yeah. That was pre Erdogan era. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in our third recipe, I'll be using. Oops, sorry. I'll be, I'll be using eggplants. On me almost. <laughs> I always mm. keep the skin on because it's very rich in antioxidants, nanocene. And what I do is that I usually uh, chop eggplants into cubes. I salt them and let them rest for 30 minutes because salt will help water excrete. I didn't know that. That's a good trick because usually what happens is that I do that and exactly. they become very, they become very and soggy and, and yeah, exactly. Right. I didn't know that salt. So that's good. what I did. I added herbs and it's in here. <laughs> So okay. we can actually get them. And we will be launching the second quiz or the second question for our uh, uh, for the competition of the day. Sorry, Nicole, I have to put it here because watch it, it's very The up. prizes are going to be bottles of wine, obviously. Okay, so the second question is, who is the producer of the Santa Cristina Campo Grande? Okay. 
Okay, so, so what I have here is roasted eggplants with herbs, salt, and what will I be adding and some colored uh, tomatoes. I will be adding a dressing that I am lately addicted to. It's a very simple dressing. It's based on the use of tahini. Tahini is very rich in vitamins and minerals and uh, it's also loaded in antioxidants. So I simply dilute tahini in water and I add to it some salt, black pepper, and you could be enhancing the flavors if you do have at home truffle salt or truffle oil. This will also be enhancing uh, the flavors of this very simple dish, but that you will see now because I have two persons next to me that are gonna try it and they will eventually see uh, the explosion of flavors paired with a we're French wine this time. French wine, we're going okay. to France. We're now. going to France and we're going to the Côte du Rhône area, which is uh, in the south of France. So we're in a warm area producing uh, wine. Uh, and uh, we're going to see that this wine is going to match very well the herbs and the tahini because it's a wine that is spicy and at the same time very fruity and it's very rich, very uh, interesting wine. So I'm going to serve you this and I'm going to make you guess what is the main aroma Merci. that you have in the first gla on the glass. So how do you know when you need to serve red or white? And That's a good question. Um, you know, the, traditional, the tradition says you start with white, you finish with red, you take uh, white uh, on fish, red on meat, but that's actually not always the case. So depending on the style of wine that you're serving, you can choose to have a white wine or a red wine on a, on a meat or on a fish. So it really depends on the style of wine. So if you have a fish dish, for example, you would go for a light red wine. If you have a nice steak that's chewy, that's very a bit greasy, we would go for a full-bodied wine. Okay. If you're having something like this, which is vegetables and tahini sauce, we're going to have something that's a little bit spicy to go with the tahini. And it's going to be very savvy, very round in the mouth to be able to match with the rest. So it's really something about elegance. Is it also like taste? Or no? It's about the taste, yeah. It's about what you no, have I mean in your class. own personal taste. Is it at it is, as definitely. Uh -huh. You have to remember one thing. Wine is first your personal taste. It's like cooking. If yeah. you like it or you don't like it, it's your choice, okay? When we're talking, you can have, I can maybe tell you, I love this wine, the Côte d'Europe, it's one of my favorite to have regularly, and you can tell me I hate it. Right. It's with totally fine, it's like saying to a guy, uh, I, don't, I don't like sushi, okay? If he doesn't like sushi, yeah, like, don't you don't like it. it. So I can give you the best sushi ever in the world, you won't enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really about personal taste, and you always have to remember that. Uh, it's like, I guess, in Nicole, in food, it's a personal taste as well. Definitely. So everything is becomes, at the end, your feeling and your personal yeah. Yeah. Uh, taste And about within it. time, we always tend to change and develop our taste buds. I used to hate tahini. Thank you. Really? Yeah. No. Do, you, do you not like hummus? Yes, but <laughs> hummus is yeah, very, but it's very, very subtle, not like when you eat it no, this way. No, when you way. eat it this way, yeah. No, now, literally, this is I one of my daily dressings that I prepare for my salad. So this is what I do. It just takes some time to dilute it in water. And then what I do, this is my favorite part of the day, feeling the salt from the box and, you know, like the sound, adding it. <laughs> and then playing around with some black pepper. And what we can also do here is add some truffle oil that I was lucky enough to find. Maybe it's one of the last <laughs> bottles in town. Yeah, it's the last one in Lebanon, I think. It's like a dinosaur. <laughs> um, be careful, they might take it before you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's all yours. Sharing is caring. So it's just uh, <laughs> tahini and water and salt. Tahini, so water, while I'm opening black this. Black pepper and uh, salt. Um, Wait. So. Can you guys tell me what you smell in the glass? There is a very, very distinct smell about this wine. Cherry. Not far. It's a red fruit, but it's not cherry. Red berries. It's not red Mulberry. Berry. It's mulberry. Mm. You have very... You, you're right, you said it's a red fruit. Red fruit is always a good indication. So when you don't pinpoint the exact 
flavor that you have in the glass, you can call for a family. So if you're not sure that you have, let's say, uh, cherries or you have plums, you can say, I smell red fruits. Ah, okay. Okay, or I smell, there's another very typical smell of this wine, which is what? But I smell specifically cherry. I smell cherry. Yeah, it's very, it's very close. It's I the also same. smell plums when you said plums. You said and plums and cherry, you have them both. And you have another smell that's very, this one is very harder to end this divide. No, 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 no. I think it's this one. The uh, red bell pepper, slightly. slightly. It's not red bell pepper. You're not far. It's a spice, but it's not red bell. So this is a thin line between the two. You're in the spice area and not in a, veg in a fruit area. So you have pepper in ah. the wine. It's pure pepper. You have this little spiciness that comes out. So that's really typical from pepper. Gonna bother you one so, more time. Can bother me, bother me. Want cherries? No. Can, cherries? I, can I just have the serving? Uh, yeah. This? Yeah, three of them, please. Thank you. So, basically, when you have this wine, what, you, uh, what did you feel when you had it, Karim? What's your first feel of it? Uh, let, me, let me feel it again. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you actually really like wine. <laughs> I do. So, what you should feel, you have, at the beginning you have something that's very subtle, that's not very expressive. Then when it goes in the middle of the mouth, you have this explosion of fruit that comes, that covers over your palate. Yeah, there, there's and a And at the end, you have a little bit of tannins, and you have... Spice. A little bit of spice remaining in the mouth. So that's really yeah. typical, and that's going to go very well with the tahini and the herbs that are pleasant on the plate. And you're going to see that it's a very elegant and pleasant wine. I don't know how, how do you feel about this one? Well, I mean, uh, the spice in the end, yeah, definitely, I can feel that. And, I, and there's that fruity, there's a fruity uh, uh, sense to it, yeah. And I, I like it. Is it similar to, I don't know, maybe I'm off, but is it similar to a Malbec? No, this is, actually, I understand why you think Malbec, because this wine is composed uh, mainly from Syrah and Grenache and a little bit of um, Carignan. So, um, so basically, what you have in this, the spiciness comes from the Syrah. Mm. And the Carmener, the Carmener typical side is the spiciness. Ah, okay. okay? So the mid, but the main difference between the Syrah and the Carmener, the Syrah gives you more elegance. Okay, Carmener is harder in the mouth, it's more tannic. So you have more elegance, and this is done, it's, it's a combination between the Syrah and the Grenache. The Grenache gives you this brown, this fruitiness part of it, and the Syrah will give you the spicy part of it. Yeah, okay. It's, it's uh, very interesting. I mean, it's good. I would have said it's a great red wine. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good red wine. Yes, I do agree with you. <laughs> so, um, where are we going? <laughs> where, where shall we go? Can, should I do... Uh, I really love Michelle. I feel like I murdered it before. Okay. Really. Michel, ma belle, sont des mots qui vont très bien ensemble, très bien ensemble. Michel, ma belle, these are words that go together well, Michel. I love you, I love you, I love you. Everybody. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. 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 I love this song too much to murder it. No. <laughs> so, um, are you hungry or are you going to play? <laughs> <laughs> I can play. No, I'm So. 
So if anyone is about to ask you what are the five criteria to look at when we are tasting wine and when we want to review a bottle of wine or uh, like what are we supposed to be looking at? Basically when you're having a wine, the most it's like, I'm going to give you something very simple that you can identify yourself to. It's like judging a plate. Okay. So when you're eating something, you always have a set of criteria. So you look at how it's done, if it's well balanced, if there's something off, is there something in excess, is there something missing, is there something... So you have a but set like of criteria. the big titles, we need to see the whether big titles, it's basically. acidic or not. Basically, I'm going to get to that. You have to be patient <laughs> with me. Basically, <laughs> what I was saying is that when you have a, a, a dish in front of you, okay. you can automatically say it's too spicy, it's not well cooked, it's okay. too salty. So you already have in your at the end, if you want, a set of words that you are used to use since you were a kid to use. Okay. The wine, the same thing. A wine should be a perfect balance. When you're having a wine, you shouldn't have anything that's off. You said acid. So if I'm having a wine, it's too acid, that means there's a problem with the wine. Okay. If you're having a wine that's too tannic, it's the same thing. It, it will remain too tannic. It won't, even if you age it, it will remain tannic. If you have something that is overpowering the wine, that means your wine is off, it has a problem. Okay. We are talking here purely technical. Now, you can like it or not like it. That's a different story. If you like, I don't know, you mentioned you don't like a lot of rosé, my challenge would make you love rosé. Because if you had only bad rosé and you don't have a good experience with it, there is a chance I can find a rosé that will suit your taste. Okay. So, it's really about the balance that you have. And if you have, if you have three main criteria, you have to look for acidity, tannins, and balance. Okay. So, if you have anything that is off the charts, that means the wine has a problem. So it's acidity, tannins, and uh, balance. And balance, these are three, the most three important things that you find in the wine. If you have anything that is not, that is off balance, chances are the wine is bad. Okay, all right. Okay. Thank you, Amal, for your comment. Uh, we wish you were all with us actually today, but. I feel sorry for them that they're not. <laughs> <laughs> During this confinement period, unfortunately and sadly, we will be doing this. Uh, stay at home thing until uh, better days are awaiting us. So uh, what's going to be our third uh, quiz or question for uh, the audience? The third quiz is um, what's the main grape varietal present in the Côte du Rhône? Okay, I mentioned there are three grapes in the wine and what is the main grape varietal that brings the spiciness to the wine? That would be the last question. The main ingredient? The main grape varietal. Oh, great. There's only grape in wine, you know that. Okay, <laughs> so please guys, do submit your answers. Uh, those who are watching me on my Instagram account, Eat Like Nicole, I'm sorry, I'm not able to answer your questions because obviously I'm here. Um, there's a team there answering questions on Eat Like Nicole on Facebook and Enotica Instagram and Enotica Facebook. Please submit your answers. And we will hopefully be announcing the winners, uh, um, I guess, by tomorrow. By Imagine. tomorrow. Uh, submit your answers, be numerous, and uh, what do we have to, what, anything to, <laughs> to add? I can figure um, something out. No, we are, um, we are, we hope that uh, the session was um, informative for you guys and uh, we're going to probably reschedule other themes and other uh, items to do. So and please also bring send us your suggestions. To yes, know. if you have any suggestions or any things that you would like us to go over in our next session, please submit them to Eat Like Nicole or Enotecas and we will be make sure that uh, we answer that in our next life. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, you can find the recipes. You can find the recipes on uh, Eat Like Nicole. Surely, and they'll be shared on uh, Enotica as, as well. well. They're going to be shared on Enotica social media. And um, no, it makes anything. One last trip. Karim, <laughs> it was nice having yeah, you and to meet you. It was a pleasure. Always. And uh, actually, your presence was uh, really interesting because people could relate to what, like most people do, is that basically how do we start tasting wine? Where do I start? And uh, today is a start and I hope we'll have others together. Yeah, voilà. absolutely. Thank you. Thanks so You're much. welcome.
Um, I, I'm, I was very happy to have you here. You know, I've been uh, living in my kitchen during this entire confinement. I even turned it some days to my bedroom. I'm happy that I finally got to taste your <laughs> cooking, Nicole. I've been looking at your recipes for weeks. And uh, that thank you really for that nothing. great experience. So I hope we will be uh, collaborating more and preparing more recipes and uh, more uh, live sessions. And uh, as we always say, I would like to end it on uh, sweet notes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. All right. Sure. No more tears and my heart is dry. I don't laugh and I don't cry. I don't think about you all the time. But when I do, I wonder why. I no tears and my heart is dry. I don't laugh and I don't cry I don't think about you all the time But when I do, I wonder why I'm old, but I'm not that old Young, but I'm not that bold I don't think the world is so I'm just doing what we're told Yeah, old, but I'm not that old Young, but I'm not that bold I don't think the world is so I'm just doing what we're told I feel something so right Doing the wrong thing I feel something so wrong Doing the right thing Couldn't lie, couldn't lie, couldn't lie Everything that kills me makes me feel One day baby will be old Oh baby, we'll be old Think about the stories that we could've told Yeah, one day, baby, we'll be old Oh baby, we'll be old Think about the stories that we could've told Yeah, one day, baby, we'll be old Oh baby, we'll be old Think about the stories that we could've told Yeah, one day, baby, we'll be old Oh baby, we'll be old Oh baby, we'll be old Oh baby, we'll be old So before getting old Before getting old Each and every single day and count your blessings Better days are coming Stay safe and uh, cheers Cheers to Stay that safe. Cheers, cheers to everybody Cheers Cheers